Like all of the better ARFs, the Top Flight Giant P-51 came double boxed and all of the components came from the box without any damage at all. For the most part, the covering was done very well and remained tight. There was some loose spots on some of the smaller pieces, but that was easily fixed when we went through tightening the covering. The ailerons and flaps come taped in their positions on the wings so you don't get them mixed up because there are left and rights of both of these. Here you can see some of the little wrinkles that showed up on some of the smaller pieces. The wheel wells for the retracts are built in at the factory, then covered over when the people apply the covering at the factory. We do have to cut these open and seal the edges down, but that was a small job. A multi-tapered hardwood spar reinforces the wings when we join the halves. The strings for pulling the servo cables have a lot of extra string on the other end where you have to tie them on to the servo cables. The control surfaces on the tail feathers are all mounted using CA hinges. The wrinkling you see here is the worst we had on the whole plane, but this is fixed easily with the covering iron. The canopy arrived in perfect shape, and it has a nice line that we follow when we cut this out before mounting. I like the top flight uses heavier, more durable material for their canopies than a lot of the other ones that are very brittle and thin. The cowl itself is nicely made and nicely painted. And one of the surprising things I found in the kit is the spinner that comes with this plane. This is where a lot of the other manufacturers are looking the other way and make them believe they didn't see the spinner the top flight gives you. The parts all come bagged in logical groups. And that made it easier to find what we needed during the assembly process. Top flight gives you a good heavy duty set of fixed gear with the plane, but it's all set up for retracks. I might have to do the initial flights with fixed gear and then go to the retracks later. Even all of the dress me up parts come nicely packaged. Top Flight was apparently having trouble getting some of the tanks that they usually send with these kits so they included Dubros with some of them. And since this is Top Flight you get a good set of decals that make this plane look great. Even better is a nicely done instruction manual that was written by somebody familiar with the English language. Top Flight spent a few bucks printing these manuals so the pictures all come out clear so you can see what they're talking about. I've been using these power safe receivers in all of my bigger planes because they're easier to work with and they work just fine. Warbird fuselages won't lay still, they always want to roll around and slip off of something. I made a quick cradle that makes working on a fuselage easy and this will also go to the field for putting a wing on. Top Flight gives us this strip of heavy duty CA hinge material and we have to cut out the pieces for hinging the tail feathers. This took like all of 10 minutes to do. I had to run a knife through the CA hinge slots to open them up fully, but they went in very easily. I mounted the EME 60 early on just to make sure that the muffler and the engine was going to fit in this plane. I had to make some little cutouts in a fuse for the bison muffler down tubes, but I love this muffler and it's going on this plane. I laid a wing tube into the wing saddle so I could make sure that the horizontal stabilizer runs parallel with the wing. The manual does a nice job of telling you how to make sure that the horizontal stabilizer is square to the fuselage. This is easy to do and it works great. After epoxying the stab in place, I checked one final time to make sure it was square to the fuselage and then left it alone overnight. The aileron and flap servos are mounted to the bay doors using hardwood blocks that we have to epoxy in place. Incidentally, this is the servo that I used throughout the airplane. I used a rat tail file to make a quick relief where the servo wire comes out of the servo so it doesn't rub and fail later on. I use these extra screws through the bay door into the servo blocks just to make sure that these things stay where I put them. I have had this epoxy joint fatigue and fail later on. It takes a little longer to get these servos installed but they're going to stay where I put them. By the end of day two I had the flaps and ailerons hinged, all the servos in and wing halves joined. These holes are provided for bringing out the servo leads and the retract air tubes or cables if you use the electric versions.